What's up you guys, welcome back to Why Body Nation. We've got two Durangos in the best Dodge color, Destroyer Gray, both black top versions. One has the Hemi V8 5.7 liter and the other one has the V6 Pentastar 3.6 liter. So we're gonna go ahead and check both of these out and see if we can save you guys some money without needing the V8 or if the V8 is the real deal. So right here, this is the one with that 5.7 liter Hemi in it. And interestingly enough, they both have the same hood. I like to call this the Hellcat hood. It looks very similar to the outgoing model year Charger Hellcat hood. Uh, you know, it has the one intake vent right here and then has the two exhaust vents right there to go ahead and evacuate that heat. This one right here is a GT, again, blacktop version, destroyer gray. Both of them are rear wheel drive, so we're comparing apples to apples here, folks. We got the rear wheel drive GT V6 and the rear wheel drive GT correction RT V8. And as you guys can see, we are here at Auto Nation Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of South Columbus, Georgia. Chris, the sales guy I always work with, is ready to hook you up on a on a Durango Charger. Why, I mean, you guys already are, you're here for the wide bodies, I know. He can hook you up. Mitch is the sales manager that will make sure your deal is good to hook. And let's go ahead and get into these Durangos. All right, so we're gonna start with the GT V6 because it has a little bit less options, but is still nicely equipped. It has the approximately eight inch screen in it, not the bigger screen that you guys will see in the V8 black top edition momentarily. Let's go ahead and get a quick startup for you guys. You guys already heard how the exhaust sounds from the outside, but obviously we're gonna check it out here on the inside. Get that wheel straighter for you guys. Get a quick, this one is limited at 3,000, whereas the V8 is limited at 4,000. So let's go ahead and check out what the options are on this window sticker. Uh, I was not attacked by a bear during the making of this video, but the window sticker was. So let's check this out. Okay, so base price of the rear wheel drive Durango with the V6 is 36. Got all these standard features, including the 8.4 inch screen right here. And this screen does the job. This is the, the tried and true Uconnect system that everyone's been using. You got the settings where you can configure all the apps. You've got your seat controls right here, which is my favorite zone personally. And then you've got the climate control, you know, your media. And then if you plug in, obviously you'll get your Apple CarPlay, which everybody knows and loves. But as far as equipment goes, let's check this out. We've got our $4,000 customer preferred group, which is getting you all these nice seats, some better trim, the better uh, accoutrements up there, as far as the seats and the infotainment goes. You also got the black top package, which in my opinion is a good deal. You've also got the performance hood, which I called out for you guys as the Hellcat-esque hood. Now, as far as this one goes, again, it's got the newer style gauge cluster that you're gonna find, you know, in the, in the the Grand Cherokees uh, have a very similar one. It's got the decent Uconnect. For me, it gets everything I need done, but you'll see that the bigger screen is cooler. It's got a relatively nice, simple center console with some decent storage in here. Obviously, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We're gonna go ahead and shut it down for you guys, and then we will go ahead, check out the back seat. Stay tuned, we are gonna take these for a quick spin to see if the V6 is truly better than the V8 for some people, and obviously the V8 will be better for others. This has the bench seat for the second row, and then obviously a third row as well, so you can fit seven Mamma Jammas in here, whereas the other one only can fit six. And as far as fitting, you know, I'm 6'3", I'm sitting decent. I don't know if I would want to be in the back like I was in the, my minivan back when I was a kid. My parents had, uh, you know, Toyotas, Toyota minivans. I think this is way cooler personally. And then look at that, you get a good view of the front row here. Now, since we talked about the second row, let's go ahead and jump into our V8 model. Now, real quick, before we do that, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. We're doing the 5,000 subscriber giveaway with Apple AirPods Pro. We already did Powerbeats Pro, now we're doing Apple AirPods Pro. Subscribing gets you entered to win for free, so make sure you go ahead and turn that subscribe button from red to gray for a chance to win those $250 headphones. Now, before we open the door up, here's why Destroyer Gray is Dodge's best color. Look how dirty this car actually is because it's been sitting on the lot for one and a half minutes. 
but I mean, from far away, the thing still looks killer. Obviously, it has the nice tint on it. I mean, I just love this color. Some people say it looks like primer. I say it looks like the best color Dodge has ever and will ever make. RIP to my red eye on the way that could not be ordered in this color. Thank you for that, Dodge. So, captain's chair is in the back. We'll go over the window sticker in a second for this bad, Larry. But... We got the set of the third row. This one is all leather and has the two individual captain's chairs. Now, yes, they are captain's chairs, but they're not, you know, they're not the, the beefy couch-like seats that you kind of get more up front. So while they are cool, they are not necessarily worth it depending on if you guys need that option for seven people to sit, which a lot of people who buy the Durangos do. Let's get a start up for y'all. Sorry, the wheel is turned got to do it for this thumbnail you know all right now we got a little bit of gas we're gonna go ahead and give this one a rev for you guys this one goes up to 4,000 before it hits the limiter sounds pretty good I have this same 5.7 liter Hemi in my Charger Daytona that I will be trading in now the screen let's talk the screen obviously looks great you know, nice 10, approximately 10 inch screen. I'll check the window sticker in a moment for you guys, but you know, it's got the newer Uconnect software. Obviously it's a bigger screen. It's got, you know, it just, it's got the look and the feel that people want for 2021, right? Because these are 2021s after all, you know, you can rock because the screen is bigger. You can rock multiple things. You can multitask, you know, this one does have the nav package as well, but I would recommend Apple CarPlay personally, but that's just me I like to use Waze. As far as comfort goes, this has the rear and the front seat controls. It's got the vented seats. Whew, that is the best thing down here, down south here in Columbus, Georgia. It get quite hot. Got to prevent that uh, that back sweat, you know what I'm saying? Also, though, love this about Dodge, hard buttons. They have the touchscreen, and they also have the hard buttons, which that is one of my favorite things about Dodge. You guys can check out the back seat while I'm talking too, but I do like that Dodge has redundancy with the buttons because I personally prefer a lot of hard buttons and then just to monitor things on the screen, Apple CarPlay, directions, all that good stuff, you know, audiobooks, music, all that good stuff. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into what this vehicle actually has. So the starting price of this one, because of the V8, much higher at 45, but worth it in you know my opinion and some others. Got all the standard features right here. You got your Uconnect with the 10.1 inch display. That is where that is at. Then let's get into some options. So you got the leather trim bucket seats, which are, you know, you're seeing right here. Leather trim with that Dodge logo, 10 out of 10. Then you got your black top package, which is the same as the V6. Trailer tow group, also the same. And then you got your second row fold and tumble captain's chairs. So you're only getting six seats, but these are the fold and tumble version too, so you can stow them pretty easily. Other than that, you are going, you are ringing in at 51. I mean, this one, you know, pretty similar, just a little bit nicer on the interior. You're getting, getting more stitching here with the red stitching. Uh, up here is pretty much the same, but down here a little bit nicer. It, this one's not totally decked out, but it's got some good options. All right, so let's quickly look at the out or at the price of this, and then we will go for a quick test drive. So the out the or the MSRP of the V6 model is 44. 250 so about a seven grand price difference between these two models you got the v8 with a little bit more leather and the 10.1 inch screen in here and then you got the v6 still with the suede inserts and uh the decent you know 8.4 inch screen as we kind of all know and love from the 2020s and earlier so with that being said let's go ahead and jump in first let's check out these these drls i'm gonna turn the lights on for you guys so you can see them with the fog lights and then we will go for a quick spin to test out the difference in the motors. Boom, and got those fog lights on for you guys. Everybody loves the fog lights, even though they're getting rid of a lot of them. But looks pretty good. Everything is LED, everything is nice and white. There's no two different colors, which aesthetically pleases many. All right, let's hit the road. All right, guys, so we are going to go ahead and drive the 5.7 Hemi V8 model first because I want to see how much of a step down the V6 is rather than a step up. Because if we did the V6 first, 
obviously we would think the V8's better, right? But what we're trying to get after here is, do you really need to spend the extra four or five-ish grand on the 5.7 liter V8 instead of the 3.6 liter V6? Now I do owe you guys some fuel economy numbers, so I'll go ahead and throw those up on the screen right now so that we're, before we get onto the, the pole road, Let's actually go ahead and take a quick right here. We'll give it a little bit of action. Hmm. All right, so to me, that was fair. It felt good, sounded good. I'm getting a little worried about the V6, unless you're really just gonna go do a, you know, try to save the money. I mean, yeah, I think that, I think this 5.7 is pretty much the right engine for this, 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 I'm going to call it a truck. It drives much more like a truck or a big SUV than it does a, you know, a, a, my family had a Toyota Sienna and a Dodge Grand Caravan. You know, we also had RAV4s back when they were the body on frame version, not the newer crossover version. And this reminds me very much more of my way closer to a pickup truck, pickup truck way closer to, you know, the older body on frame style than it does like a minivan. Although it is, it is smooth. The steering's pretty light. Uh, in the heavier or in the higher trim models, I'm sure on the SRT and the SRT Hellcat, you can probably mess with the steering feel and make it a little heavier. I mean, obviously the Hellcat is gonna be banana land fast and just awesome because it's gonna be that all wheel drive. Remember this one is rear wheel drive. So you are probably a little lighter and potentially a little bit better fuel economy with it just being, you know, two wheel drive in the rear. We're gonna go ahead and do one more pull here and we'll get in the V6 and see if it can keep up a little bit. It, it does well, it does well. I like the 5.7, I think that's kind of where we're at. I'm not trying to be too partial here. I think the 5.7 is the right motor for this vehicle if you got the money for it and you wanna spend the extra money on the gas. Now, let's go ahead, roll back up to the V6 GT, but still in the best color, Destroyer Gray and we'll see how that works. We're actually gonna back through here because the dealership's got a nice tight, you guys can check out the backup camera right there, but we're gonna save the wheels by going through backwards. Backup camera on this 10.1 inch screen is better than the 8.4 inch screen on the other one. This one I do not believe has the surround cameras, any banana stuff like that. But personally, I only really feel like you need those when you're in a big Raptor or a long Suburban or some big thing like that. So let's go ahead. We're rolling up to the other one and let's go ahead and jump on it. I do notice a difference now that I've started getting more comfortable with the screen the 10.1 inch screen this one does seem smaller it's kind of one of those things that just naturally happens when you get to the bigger better products all right so get on to the back road here and we'll go ahead and check it out all right let's see it still has pickup the v6 does a better job, I think, of the initial pickup. The V8's a little bit more linear in the power. I um, mean, it, it builds and builds, sounds better, obviously. Um, but the V6 does a good job at picking up very quickly. And I noticed this back when I had a rental charger as well. Got a big diesel. All right. Honestly, not as much of a difference as you would think. You would think gaining two extra cylinders 
or, or in this case, losing two cylinders and losing about two liters of displacement would hurt you, it's not that noticeable. The only thing I really notice is the, the interior amenities, you know, with this one being the suede and stuff. We've got to be careful through here. I think these are all Mercedes on this truck right here, so that's pretty, pretty sweet. But, yeah, you know, these are... The V6, the, the Pentastar V6, there's a reason they've been putting these in their cars as more of a base engine or on the Jeep, you know, it's a higher level engine. I mean, this thing's been around for a while and it's not gonna win you any drag races, but it's also no slouch. I mean, a lot of vans, uh, they switch to V6s for, for obvious reasons, because you used to be able to get, here, one more, one more pull. Yeah, I mean, it, it gets you there. It's And it doesn't sound like a four cylinder that's really, you know, what, like when I drive my wife's uh, Toyota RAV4 that's got the, the, the classic Toyota 2.4 cylinder, uh, you know, in it, it really, if you get on it, it starts to really, you know, complain. It, it gets really grumbly. This one, it wants to rev. It wants to get you up to speed. It doesn't have as much of that shove you in the back feeling as the 5.7, but honestly, the V6 is not bad. And especially if you're just getting this as a utility vehicle, I mean, I can see where, where the V6 makes a lot of sense. Now, I would try, well, I mean, depends on if, if you're willing to spend the money, but I would try out that new screen that they have, you know, the 10.1, screen because even though it's you know technically only an inch and a half bigger you know with screens they measure diagonally so you're getting a lot more surface area with just a small bump in the screen i would say the screen's probably like 25 percent larger approximately that is with my uh off the cuff public math which you're not supposed to do math in public as you guys know all right guys that just about wraps it up so you know, honestly, that 3.6 liter V6 really holds up pretty well when you compare it to that 5.7 liter V8. Obviously, the V8 sounds better, gives you a little bit more shove in the back. But as far as getting up to speed, you know, on, on the local roads or on the highway, you're not sacrificing much and you're getting better fuel economy. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have good or bad experiences with the 3.6 Pentastar motor or good or bad experiences with the 5.7. 6.4, 6.2 in the Hellcat with that supercharger on it. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys enjoyed the Destroyer Gray. I always get excited when I see cars in this color, especially on the Durango. It makes it just look so sinister, especially with that black top package and a nice tint on it. So with that being said, if you guys are interested, we are here at Auto Nation Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of South Columbus. Mitch and Chris will go ahead and hook you up with the best deal possible do not pay atlanta prices don't pay city prices don't don't get hosed by your local dealership come down to columbus you know drive the 90 minutes or whatever it may be if come from alabama florida whatever it may be get a better price i can swing by for delivery if you want with the red eye or with the c8 or whatever you want me to bring and we will see you for our next video and our next car deal stay safe out there see ya